Hey guys, welcome to game one of the winner's match. This is going to be on Tau Cross. Some of you may not be familiar with Tau Cross, although if you're watching me, maybe you are. Nine o'clock base here, we have Siudadu, who is Zeti as the brown Zerg. Tau Cross is one of those, actually it's kind of in between macro map, a little bit larger than typical three player maps, I think. You've got kind of this bridge gap, which leads to the natural expansion and a big area right here. Um, all sorts of interesting bridges and rivers going across the middle. There's a, this would be like your natural third that you might take. Mineral only at the 12 o'clock. And it's a three player map from there. So here's kind of the mineral only equivalently and the mineral only kind of a, what's the word? There's a word for this where you, you basically cut it in thirds and rotate it around and it's something close to that. Although it's not exactly that, as you can see kind of this upper left hand face. Anyway, this typically ends up being a really good map for Mutalisk play. This was in the Three Hatch Muta versus Forge Fast Expand era. A boomer map, as some people like to call it, back in the era of, I think this was like 2007, 2008 play. Six o'clock location, we have DM White, by the way, as the Great Protoss. And as promised, I looked up Ventral Sacks and Phenomenize Carapace. Phenomenize, so Phenuma I'm familiar with, that's like the Greek word for like spirit or wind. And it looks like we are, so before I get to that, we're seeing a Extractor trick, but we do see a nine pool to start things off. No overlord yet. So overlord, so getting that extra drone, which is going to make. So I assume this is a pool just to make sure that that natural expansion gets up, and also to deny scouting early. We'll see if that pays off. Still need some micro to make that happen. Vespine geyser trick actually is, from my understanding, not mineral efficient anymore. Although I'm not sure how that lines up with the overlord timing comparatively. And someone in chat letting me know, shout out to Nooks, aka Sony, letting me know that Tau Cross is a 2006 era map, although it was very, very popular amongst all players. Everyone liked it. Remember seeing, yeah, he's bringing up Nada. Loved watching Nada at any time on this map. Nada, you, just vultures everywhere on this map. Drone in position to go ahead and try to harass that natural expansion, realizing that, yeah, with that little bit later overlord timing, that that was kind of the purpose of this. Let's see if these Zerglings do their job. And push that drone back. DM White going to go ahead and end around. Keeping that drone alive is... It's like staying alive is winning. You can just keep that scouting information right there. Two additional Zerglings being produced. So he's going to see the full full eight Zerglings, which might provoke a second cannon. Or maybe a drone pole off the line. We'll see. He does have... Maybe if he plops this gateway down front, that'll provide enough blockade. Yeah. And just need some probes to kind of plug the gap. And that should be enough. There is that one cannon right there. Nexus warping in behind it. I want to talk about ventral sacks here uh, momentarily. But let's wait until we see whether this holds. So Zergling's making the way out. Is he going to go for it? Zeddy meandering across, working on that drone. Is able to push through the gap. I'm glad I didn't say anything. Zergling's able to get into the main, but it's only three Zerglings. This is enough of harassment that it could be the difference in the match, though. Third hatch going down, by the way, at that 12 o'clock base. So quick three bases. Just now taking gas. Assimilator is up, but no probes in it. So anyway, Ventral Sacks. Ventral has to do with uh, relating to the gut, apparently. Three Zerglings being annoying still in this main. So essentially what's happening with... Uh, I I'll stop talking about this. We'll talk about it at the beginning of the next match when it's less... Less insanity. One probe killed. <laughs> it's disrupting the commentary. Keep it going. One probe already down and more mining disrupted here from DM White. He's having trouble dealing with this. Zeddy moving this, doing a pretty good job of backing these Zerglings off, allowing them to regenerate health. Because I think you regenerate one health immediately after disengaging. One Zealot finally out to try to engage this. He needs to be careful because with decent micro, three Zerglings can kill a Zealot sometimes. But again, it comes down to the micromanagement. Back in the main, we see a Hydra Sten being produced. I think Zeddy is thinking about going for a bust. He's already got four drones here at the natural. This is more 973 uh, proper. And considering all the disruption to the mining and everything else, I can see a lot of success if he just go if he just straight goes for the bust. Natural expansion is mining. He's got what six probes there. His worker count has been flustered. Cybernetic score warping in. Another drone killed. Wow, Zeddy getting a lot out of these Zerglings. And this, okay, still silent there. Does have these six drones right there. Looks like some Hydralis already being produced. And Hydralis speed. Two Zalts to try to defend this. 
Still two Zerglings in the main. Getting yet another kill. That's four kills. Five kills between these two Zerglings. Plus, there was that one Zergling who died already. And finally, it looks like White getting a little bit of breathing room with an additional kill. Actually transferring drones to the natural expansion for better saturation also to not have to deal with this annoying Zergling anymore. But keep in mind, despite all this, that Zergling providing a ton of scouting information. I think we're going to see a bust here with three Hatch Hydra play. That is uh, seven drones here at the natural expansion. We are seeing only a single drone here at the third, though. But that's still plenty to produce a lot of Hydralists at the front. And keep in mind, the Zealots moving forward are going to have very little... So the Zealots need to run forward to get scouting information, but once they're picked off, White isn't going to have a lot to deal... And, oof, that's unfortunate. Isn't going to have a lot to deal with this incoming attack. So five Hydralists quickly able to wipe that... Zealot out. Second Zealot. Honestly, they can just stutter step, take care of that second Zealot. And now White needs to just plop down a ton of cannons on his front to try to defend this. He's already got two cannons warping in. He's probably going to need a third, a fourth, and a fifth, and needs it in a hurry as the Hydralists are making their way across. And actually probably should pull probes right now to try to defend this. He's got Zealot in the gap, but this isn't enough cannons, honestly, and it's coming in a little bit too late, I think. Hydralists waiting towards that natural. Diving in, that first cannon that's warped in going to be wiped out. That Zealot going to be cleaned up immediately afterwards. Another cannon warping in, but plenty of Hydralists to take care of that as well. Probes not off the line yet. And more probes getting annihilated. That's, yeah, there's GG. White calls it. Dice the Hydra Bust. Okay, we're going to move on to one more match here. I might, uh, for the Twitch audience, pause after this, but we will see. So we're going to move on to game two of the winner's match. Is Eddie taking game one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.